I think we'll, we'll get started. And if other people join in, that's great. Um, so thanks all for coming. Um, and, and thank you all for participating in the Design Plus Make Fellowship this uh, summer. It, um, Design Plus Make Fellowship, the idea is that it's a six week intensive experience where you're in the makerspace making things. And there's a theme and the theme is usually associated with a nonprofit organization that we're working with. Um, this, this program, this term, we worked with um, some volunteers through Enable, uh, two medical students, Lena and Alex, um, who uh, work with a patient who's a W amputee um, and gave the design challenge of making a, a prosthetic limb to help a person we'll call Mr. K eat food. Um, some of the challenges that we faced with this particular time around, or this being the pilot version, um, uh, is that it was remote, obviously, so that was tricky. Um, students had to collaborate with each other and with myself and with all of you through the internet. Um, uh, and secondly, uh, they didn't get to directly work with Mr. K. So it was working off of images and measurements and then feedback from Alex and Lena. Um, so that presented this other kind of secondary challenge. Um, in the years to come, we hope that it will be back in the makerspace. Um, the other kind of big challenge that came up about is that there was this delay. So um, the students would finish the design, send it to me, I would 3D print it, and then mail it to them. And so they'd have to wait several days till they got the object and then they could make modifications from holding it. Um, to counteract that, we're turning um, our time, we're going to flex about a week's worth of time over the rest of the summer. Um, so that I can keep sending designs to students and they can keep working on them. Um, so they're not finished, they're, they're coming along and they look great. Um, but that means that we're still um, happy to hear feedback. So as you're listening to the presentation, if you're taking notes um, afterwards, be sure to let the students know. Um, with that, I think I will turn things over to the students. There's three presentations. And the first one is Sean Pei. Now, I didn't give you access yet. Sean Pei, do you want your screen to be? I'll give you both co host privileges and you can determine how you want to. Yeah. Uh, I'll um, but yeah, yeah, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, I think I'll just share my screen. So um, let's hope this works. Uh, are you seeing this? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'll uh, start off today's presentation by presenting my device, which I named Eat with Ease. Uh, I tried. I'm not very good with names, but it's a assistive eating device designed by, well, me and here is a rendering of what it might look like. Um, and so, first of all, um, I want to start with like, why do we even, how, why are we even doing this? So, this device is designed for Mr. K, who's a double MPT, and this is the image of his right hand. And as you can see, he has only a portion of his uh, palm left. and he has some wrist mobility, but beyond that is uh, completely gone. So, so, uh, so we are trying to design some device for him so he can eat. But um, so exact to be more exact, I, I think now I'm just guessing here, but I think some points we need to focus on is that. Uh, Mr. Ken used to have eating autonomy, so which means he should be able to use this device and eat by himself without the well extensive helps of others. And then we I also think we need this device to have an uh, intuitive usage. So that means you don't when you are using a device, you, you don't have to like go through some kind of mental and physical adaptive training to be to use it. You should be able to pick it up and use it right away. Well, maybe not right away, but pretty quickly. And third of all, uh, I think you, the device should provide some wrist mobility. There's something Mr. K might want because uh, wrist is, well, <clears throat> is 
one of the only thing he can move on his hand and having a having a, the ability to use the wrist may be very important to him. So those are the three points I thought uh, is crucial to this device and this whole design. And so I, <clears throat> so the next step when I received this and the next step is I went kind of went into the, inside my brain and tried to pick out some, some things from the chaotic storm that's constantly going on inside. I was able to pick up like three, three things that this specific device really needs. The first thing is you should be able to spoon and fork up the food without problem. Now it doesn't have to go as fluid and smoothly as like a real hand, but it should do, it should do a, with a reasonable degree of like fluidity. And second of all, um, it, it's an obvious step, but it cannot fall off the hand when you're using it. Now this has proven a little bit more tricky than I initially thought because we didn't have the opportunity, opportunity to actually work with Mr. K, so we don't know how the device might actually fit. And the third is that the device will provide good wrist mobility, which means uh, the device cannot have a whole, it cannot be a whole piece that is rigid around his whole forearm. But even though I was able to pick out those like small cluster of things from the storm, I was still having a hard time to get started. So, so I <clears throat> decided to look online and test, like see what device already exists out there. The first device I found is a device I feel on the palm uh, as shown here. So this is a very simple design and it should work reasonably. But when I actually tried it out myself, I found the use is kind of not intuitive because you, the utensil is not usually placed there. And then the strap, when you are not strapped very tightly, the strap will actually rotate around your hand as you eat because there's a constant force being applied against it. So, so the strap will just kind of slide. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, I'm not seeing the, myself, but the, you will kind of just slide around and bring in the utensil along with it. So I didn't think it's a very good design. It, it should be very quick to make, but, uh, but I didn't think it's very good. So the, the second thing I found online is modifying the utensil itself. Now with this device, it's very weird um, and high tech, I imagine, because you can just put the food into the slot and the robotic arm, you just bring up the food itself and bring it to your mouth. I don't know about you, when I first thought, saw this, I immediately thought of uh, this weird machine from modern times by Charlie Chaplin. Uh, this is one of the films I grew up with. And supposedly this device is just able to feed the worker and while they are still wor working down there. Now, uh, for obvious reasons, it's not very practical. I don't have the expertise or knowledge or the budget to design some brand device like this. So this also doesn't work for the, our specific needs. So I thought maybe we need to design something entirely new. And now I started by examining how I hold the spoon. As you can see here, um, if you can see the camera, the, the image should suffice. When we hold the spoon, we hold the spoon perpendicular to the plane of our palm or our arm. So, so, un, so unlike uh, the first device I showed you, it, we, our in, intuitive spoon holding position should be this. So naturally next, I went on and tried to analyze some of the forces maybe involved in this whole thing. Now I'll, as usual, uh, I'll ignore gravity and we're in a vacuum. So this is one one, but, um, but the 
the first immediately obvious force we encounter here is when we are trying to spin or fork up something, we need to push against the food. So that's the first force, this force here. And then when, when we actually pick the food up, during, during that like scooping motion, there's another force kind of applied uh, directly down here. So those two forces combined, we have a force, force applied directly this way. Now, if you, if you look at how we hold the spoon, we actually have a finger right here that acts as kind of like a leverage. So I put a little triangle representing that. So that changed the whole like force balance thing. In order to, you know, for the net force to be zero now, we actually need the device to push the opposite way uh, horizontally and also push down. So 